All right, so I recently did that video on why reflowing is still BS in spite of what YouTube tells you. Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of messages like right as that video came out saying, you're probably going to be pissed, but click here. And yeah, for those of you who follow the channel, you probably do understand why it was that that video had somewhat irritated me. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are watching these videos that don't really understand the history of the channel, that don't understand what I'm working for, that may not understand why it is that the video in question, uh, I was, uh, why I was so riled up in that video. So Linus actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do a, you know, a follow-up video on this, uh, you know, along with him. And... Uh, that was honestly a really cool thing to do. That's the thing, you know. Like, there are companies that are good sports, and there are companies that are not. Like, E-Tech e Parts is not a good sport. E-Tech Parts isn't, it just, I mean, aside from the fact that their parts have been total dog shit for a long time now. Like, I remember there was this one little, like, a after championing them, getting them five other wholesale customers, getting them a fucking school district to buy from them, one comment that I made on an order where the parts are falling apart, and I'm banned from posting on their social media. I fix it. A company I've criticized for seven years asks for my opinion, invites me to join their professional forum, buys me a fucking microscope. Like, that good sport. Um, and for whatever you want to say about Linus Tech Tips, I mean, if I could do the video I did, and I get an, uh, a reply back saying, like, you know, what could, what, what would you be interested in a, any type of collaboration video? That takes a good sport. So, I mean, I respect that. So what I wanted to do here is actually I was going to explain what it is that that you know that that um, that got me to do that video. And what I'm realizing is that if I actually read the email reply that I had sent him, firstly, thanks for reaching out, and let me apologize for my part in making that video meaner than it could have been. I could have phrased what I had what I had said far better had I just waited a day to do the video. To be sending this message makes you a far better sport than I probably would have been. My answer here is kind of long-winded, so feel free to toss this in the trash if you have too much to do. But if you have a few minutes, you could raise awareness for a cause that is far more important than BGA rework and key to why this issue works me up so much. I'd love to collaborate on something, but hear me out here. The issue is that proper repair, and the reason I'm saying this is because he asked if I wanted to do some type of collaboration video on properly repairing a video card. The issue is that proper repair requires replacing the chip, which is difficult, if not impossible to find in many cases. It isn't so much because the chip is difficult to replace, it is, the entire procedure can be seen here in this YouTube video, but it's totally doable. Rather, what makes it difficult is that the required chipsets are often impossible to find. Manufacturers have no interest in making these parts available. I've been working with the people behind the digital rights repair bill that I discussed here. Last year, I was invited by a group of lobbyists to visit the Senate in Albany with them to explain the practical spirit behind the bill with senators and assembly people. Video here. I am hoping that legislation will create change that requires manufacturers to make repair parts such as these BGA chipsets available to general repair centers. When I visited, I heard the other side of the story that was told to the assembly people by the lobbyists. Some lobbyists just use the words intellectual property as reason for not being able to provide schematics and board views and parts, which is standard. Other lobbyists went much further. One assembly person told me, and this is important here, one assembly person told me that the Apple lobbyist had told them that if I use their schematic and board view to fix a motherboard, that I am changing the MacBook into a PC and then misrepresenting it as still being a MacBook when I give it back to my customer, and that that is fraud. They are saying that regardless of what I do, I could be replacing one fuse, one battery charger chip with the same battery charger that was originally there, and that that is the argument they give that I am misrepresenting the PC that I just made when I replaced the chip and I, as a MacBook when I give it back to my customer. You've got to understand on some level how hearing that made my blood boil, and further so because these lobbyists get away with it. Hearing that one story from the assembly person is what turned that one day, that visit to the Senate, into the most meaningful day that I had had in years. I was running through the Senate building with these lobbyists from door to door to debunk all of Apple's bullshit. Do you remember that first time your parents let you out of the stroller in a toy store as a toddler? Imagine that feeling, but at 26 years old. Oh, what a feeling. That's exactly how I felt about my opportunity to debunk this bullshit from the moment I heard it. That entire day was amazing. The problem is that the lobbyists use excuses like that, and they get away with it when dealing with slightly out of touch, more elderly politicians, who admittedly have more important issues to deal with than my stupid chipsets and diagrams. When we have the opportunity to explain what is going on, this changes completely. I walked from room to room with what was at the time a $750 motherboard that I fixed with a wire. One 17-cent wire. 
I plugged it in, I let them see the fan spin, and I explained how the schematic and board view document allows me to know where to put this wire so that I can give the customer back a working product at any price between the cost of the wire and the $750 that it would have cost them at the Apple store. Every single one of them, when we calmly and politely explained why the Apple lobbyists were full of shit, were with the right to repair bill in, in our favor. The bigger problem is that every time there is some large repair company or segment of the community that does something that is bad practice, the lobbyists use that as an excuse. The lobbyist looks at the politician and tells them, see, we can't have parts and diagrams in the hands of these people, and they'll say these people in that tone. You know, that tone. When all of this is in context, I hope it makes more sense why I was as wired as I was in that video. It isn't about hate on you or what you do in the channel, it is just that I know that some lobbyist somewhere is pointing to that type of content and saving it as ammo for a future excuse as to why we shouldn't have a right to the tools and documentation that we need to do our job. That the moment some uneducated repair center decides to follow that advice because it worked for Linus and does so to the detriment of some customer whose repair lasts a month, that it will be used by some lobbyists as an excuse to shit can our entire industry, and it does happen. I'd love to do that content. Hell, I'd fly you here and have you operate my $10,000 machinery to fix a uh, board myself if I had a clue where to get a chip for it. Many repairs we can get chipsets for. Many we are forced to deal with dumpster diver companies in China that get God knows what from God knows where. Sometimes new chips, sometimes crap ripped from other boards, like this. <laughs> Uh, that might have a dead chip, sometimes new chips from the manufacturer that worked, but that were binned as their crap pile, which doesn't really last. It sucks. It really sucks. This work takes 45 minutes, and it is miserable when you don't even know whether you're soldering on a quad-core CPU from Intel or an alarm clock that lo is inside what looks like a quad-core CPU from Intel onto the PC board. Not to sound like Martin Luther King Jr. here, but I have a dream that one day I will be judged not based on my first party authorization from the manufacturer, but rather on my qualification and ability to maintain a business relationship and put out quality work. I have a dream of a day where when I need a chip to do my job, I go to a website, I click add to cart, and I just buy it. I pay money, they take my money, it shows up at my store door, and I don't have to find a diagram on some Russian FTP site that is illegally hosting it so that I know which way the chip is soldered onto the board. I know. It's new. It's from the good pile. I know that it will work. Such a simple thing to ask for in so many other industries, and in this one, it's something that I can only dream of where virtually no progress has been made in the past seven years. I understand it is not feasible to do large chip BGA rework at home DIY. I am not irritated so much at the idea of somebody baking a three-year-old video card that cost 200 when they bought it, so much as I am irritated at the idea of this information being out there that gives those lobbyists any more reason to separate me from my dream of doing business like a business person rather than like a criminal dumpster diver. I hope this made some sense. It's almost midnight. I'm dead tired. I am more surprised than any of you that he actually read all this because I got a reply eight minutes later. So either he is a very fast and comprehensive reader when it comes to decoding the ramblings that I send when it's close to midnight or he didn't read it and he just thought it was a good idea. Either way, he actually replied, which, which is pretty cool. Again, good sport. Uh, I, think that, I think that's pretty damn cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see where this goes from here. Now, again, in, in terms of like... In terms of, like, fixing a real video card, I don't really know. I don't even know where to get these. I, I seriously, I truly, honestly don't know where to get stuff that works. You see the fights that I go through here to get anything that works uh, for, for, for half of the shit that I, that I fix. Like, I'm, I'm, again, I'm stuck ripping crap off of donor boards. I buy spools of GPUs. They all have different date codes. Nothing works. And that's the thing. Like, I would love to show somebody how to fix a video card properly. But I would also love to live in a world where... I'm actually able to do that with some degree of, of confidence that it will regularly be successful. I want to be able to say, you know what? I want to fix this. Let me buy a part for it. Let me spend money on it and let me get it. But the reality is I may not be able to find a chip to any of these devices. Uh, I may not be able to find a working one. I may find one from China that was ripped off of some dead board three years ago that was dead because it had a dead GPU that they then sell as new after ultrasonic it and polishing it with nice new fancy balls. And then putting it on that graphics card and then looking like an asshole or, you know, looking like, an, you know, just a jackass when it doesn't actually work. And I've done videos here where I've replaced, you know, all these chipsets in the past. There's a video replacing an MCP-79. There's a Reflow video when Reflow actually made sense because 
the issue wasn't the chip was bad. It was a issue with corrosion under the chip. I've done several graphics chip replacing videos in this channel, and I've showed you that the work works afterwards. But there are a lot of them where the work doesn't work afterwards because the chip that you got was bullshit. And that's and it's a serious issue in our industry, and it's one that I would... Again, I, I don't know if it's worth wasting somebody's time over, over this type of stuff, but it would be cool to raise awareness for this crap that's going on. Because, again, you may laugh at it right now, but if this continues, we're going to live in a world where when the, the battery dies inside your phone, there's nobody available to sell you a replacement. And, like, your $700 device is literally garbage. I, I totally respect somebody else's right to do the job for, for less money than me. Like, I, I'm okay with the idea that there are other people out there that will, that will charge less money for, the, for this stuff. You know, the okay, maybe not the people that are doing, like, you know, that, that serious motherboard repair for, like, 15 bucks, but... Like, I understand that you, we charge three twenty five dollars for board repair. I totally understand why you don't want to send a fucking $250 video card to a place like this. I respect that. But when I go on a lot of forums, there are people that do this out of their house. There are people that are real businesses that are just doing business in a different manner than I am that are offering, you know, BG-8 chip replacement services for $109, including the chip. And the thing is, if you create an ind if you encourage this industry to grow, if you allow it to grow by actually selling parts to people, by providing information, by, 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 by allowing it to flourish instead of trying to shut down repair shops and trying to get rid of the supply chain, you're going to have a lot more people doing this stuff for, for 75 to 100 bucks, where it is actually worth it for the end user who bought their $400 video card a year and a half ago and where it's out of warranty to have this stuff done. And, and you never know. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I, I, I want that to happen. I want, because if that happens, that means that it's probably a sign that our industry is growing, which means it's probably a sign that our industry is allowed to grow based on sustainable supplier relations and, you know, just having, having supplier relations at all instead of me just buying stuff that, you know, some fucktard decided to rip off a motherboard with a flathead screwdriver and sell to me because I don't have a real source for it. That would be cool. I'm okay with somebody else doing the work for cheaper. And you should be too. Uh, and that, you know, that, that's kind of what we can get started here if, we can, if, if we're actually able to buy this stuff. And, you know, kind of excited. We'll see.